We have breaking news out of Detroit as the Tigers have been dealt a huge blow to their postseason hopes. Now for more, we cross live to local reporter Big Daddy Bling. Yo bro, it's a disaster as my man Austin Meadows, he's out for the season. Straight up Tory's calf. Like, what the f***? Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to Detroit. It is the final game of the second season, episode 9 it is, and we are in a position to make the playoffs in the wildcard spot, which is incredible. Uh, the bad news, though, is it is season over for Austin Meadows. Torn calf muscle, yeah, four to five months, so he'll be back for next season. But that, needless to say, is just a massive, massive blow for someone who has carried this team, certainly offensively anyway, uh, with the last two seasons. So if we're going to do it, we're going to have to do it without him. And we're also going to have to do it without Torkelson, who uh, is still we're just waiting on him to come back. He had a setback, and we don't know when he's coming back. So our two biggest bats, arguably, and we're missing them. Now, we'll go and have a look at the standings, because this is basically what it is all about today. We are currently third in our division. We are five games back of the Royals, uh, but crucially, we are one game ahead of the White Sox in that third and final wildcard spot. So if we beat the Kansas City Royals today, who have nothing to play for, then we will be going to the wildcard game. If we lose, then it all comes down to what Chicago can do. Chicago, if we go and have a look at their schedule, they are facing Cleveland. So Cleveland could do us a massive favor here. Uh, now, I'm not sure if we win and they lose what that means because then we would be on the same games i don't i don't know what that means uh but you can see our recent record is absolutely insane let's have a look at how we did finish off the season because we won nine of 11 games we swept the angels we swept the twins we won the first two against kansas city we then the lost two including one in the 16th inning and then we scraped a one nil so that was that Tense. It was very, very tense, I can tell you. Um, but that is, that's essentially all there is to catch you up on. Um, the frustrating thing, I was wondering afterwards, uh, last episode, like, you know, like, what what would we have done if Altman had been manager all year? His record is 575, his win percentage since coming in. Now, 575 puts us uh, top of the division. It's It puts us, actually, the second best team in the American League. So... If, and it is a big if, and especially without Meadows and Torkelson, but if we could get into these playoffs, then we are one of the better teams, certainly since Altman came in, you know, in baseball, never mind, uh, never mind just, uh, just the American League. So we are good. I just, I think we've left ourselves, well, we, I thought we'd left ourselves too much to do. We might have just left. <laughs> Timed our run perfectly. Uh, let's have a look at everybody's stats coming into this one. That is batting stats for pitches, which is useless. Uh, so we can see everything there. Um, yeah, the one thing I had to do is I had to bring Turnbull back in. The reason for that is I had him on waivers because I didn't really want him here anymore. But basically, he has uh, he, he refuses to get remote uh, demoted. No one claimed him. So... We brought him in. We've dropped Makanakio back to AAA just to the end of the season, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll figure something out in the off season. Uh, and Ferguson as well refuses to be demoted. So again, we'll deal with that in the off season. I don't like players who refuse to be demoted because I just feel like it's entitled, and I don't like standing for that. In terms of the hitters. Well, we've just got to try and do our best to get through here. Uh, Xavier Edwards has come into the lineup to replace uh, Meadows. Needless to say, that is not a like-for-like -like replacement. Uh, Amaya has been in good form, as has Riley Green. Let's hope that they can continue to hit with the bat because, um, yeah, you take Meadows and Torkelson out of this lineup and it does just start to look a little weak, doesn't it? So let's go. Let's face the Royals. It's the final day of the regular season. And let's see if we can sneak into these playoffs. Okay, so we can see the lineups here. It will be Edmund leading us off. I'm so nervous at second base. Castro will uh, bat second the DH. It will be uh, Cabrera in left field batting three. Amaya cleans up at uh, first base. It is Riley Green in right field batting five. Garcia at third batting six. Ahmed the shortstop bat seven. Badu in center field for this one. He bats eight. Trevino the catcher bats nine. 
It is Jacob de Grom on the mound. 18 games he's won for us this season. If he can match up one more, match up, notch up one more, then we will be a postseason side. We're up against Alec Marsh for them. Uh, he has an ERA this season of five. So ERA would suggest that this is a game that we can win. Let's really, really hope that we can do it. All right, so we are in Kansas City. It's Tommy Edmond to lead us off. He's batting 274 this season. Uh, reminder, we will be voting on your MVP uh, at uh, during the seventh inning stretch for this one. So make sure under heavy clouds. Yeah, make sure that you uh, don't forget to do that. There'll be a link in the description, but I'll, I'll uh, let you know more about who the nominees are. Oh, and Edmund has snuck it over the third baseman, and it is a leadoff double for our second baseman. All right, that was not the start I was expecting with a 1-2 count, but Edmund goes to second. Castro comes in, batting 277 this season, a 1-0 pitch. He lays down a bunt. It's a good one, and it gets Edmund over to third. Uh, Castro, of course, thrown out at first. And it's Cabrera now with a chance to drive in a run. He's batting 284 this season. Cabrera has done just that as it drops into shallow center field. And it is an RBI single for Cabrera. We have taken an early lead. One away runner at first for Amaya, who is batting 287 this season. It's a 2 2 pitch. Amaya, oh, he's absolutely leathered at the first base. Oh, and we just about beat out the double plate. A mayor at first then. Green comes in now, batting 252 this season. Gets away from the catcher. A mayor goes to second. Green now with a chance to drive in a second run. Can he do it? It's a 2 2 pitch. Green strikes out. So that ends the top of the first. We have scored a run though. And DeGrom will come out to face Grossman, who is batting 244 this season. Now, DeGrom has the chance to really push himself amongst the great strikeout pitchers in Tigers single season history. He is currently sixth and that is looping over into left field and they just have a single there. Seven strikeouts today will take him above Verlander into fifth and if he gets nine he'll go fourth ahead of I think it was Lolich. I think that was the guy's name uh, up into fourth all time single season. So he has 263 I think it is so far. So there yeah 263. Uh, but we've got one out runner at first here. Bobby Witt comes up to bat. 266. It's a strike. And we... Oh, damn it. Trevino throws it away into center field. And with one away, we now have a runner at third. Bobby Witt Jr. at the plate. A 1-2 pitch. Oh, and we've given them a run back. DeGrom, come on, man. You're better than that. And it's 1-1. One, one. Come on. DeGrom with a strikeout. One away. No, sorry. Two away. For Prato now, who is batting 252. A 1-2 pitch. That should be caught. We've got to Edmund going back. So it ends the first, tied at one. We earned our run when we gave them theirs. So that's just so annoying, isn't it? Garcia comes in now, batting 255. It's a 1-1 pitch. And Garcia grounds at the uh, second, and that'll be out at first. So one away, up comes Nick Ahmed, batting 262. Potentially the last time we see him... In a Tigers shirt, he has sent that deep. Uh, right field's going back and makes the catch relatively comfortably in the end. So Akil Badu comes in now, batting 201. And what can he do with a 1 1 pitch? Grounds at the first, and that will end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second. DeGrom to face Perez. Perez this season is batting 270. It's a 1 0 pitch. Perez grounds it through the infield, through the shift, and it's a leadoff single. It brings Pasquantino to the plate now, batting 233 this season, a 2 2 pitch. And that, oh, it's, oh no, it's Nick Ahmed. He's there, he claims the catch, one away. Runner stays at first. McKinstry now batting 218, a 1 1, a ground ball. That might be a double. We turn one, we can't turn the second. And that is two away now. Runner at first for Margot, who is batting 242. A full count, a walk. And we have two out, two on now. What is the Grom doing? Castillo comes up to pitch, uh, to bat, I should say, batting 277. It's a 2-0, two out, two on, as I say, and that should end the inning. It does. And we go to the third, tied at one. Trevino to the plate, batting 272. He's actually having his best season in terms of batting average and hits, I think. So that's good. 
Uh, we didn't see it there, though. Edmund now, who is one for one, got the double, of course, to lead off the game. This time, he has lined at the second. And that is two away for Castro, who uh, sacked, didn't he? He did the sack bunt last time around, a 1-0. And this time, he grounds at the shortstop. And that will do it for the top of the third. De Grom to Grossman. Grossman is one for one. It's a full count. Can De Grom notch up another strikeout? No, it's a hit up the middle. And De Grom just is a little off today, isn't he? The one day we <laughs> couldn't afford it. Pedersen now, who's 0 for 1, comes in. Runner at first, no one out. Oh, 2 on. De Grom, you're killing me, mate. You're absolutely killing me. Witt Jr. now, who is 0 for 1. A 1-1. One, one. Witt Jr., that could be a double play. There's one. There's two. Two away, runner goes to third, and it's Prato now who is 0 for 1. Can we finish this inning? It's a 3-1. He walks in, runners at the corners. I'd rather that than a hit, to be honest. Perez comes in, though, now. He is 1 for 1. A full count. We've walked another one. Floated bases, two out. Pasquantino comes in. He's 0 for 1. It's a first pitch swing. Oh, I can't watch. It's a ground ball. Amaya has it, and we dodge a bullet there. All right, everybody breathe. We go to the fourth tight at one. Cabrera will lead us off. He is one for one to date with that RBI, of course. A 1-0 pitch. Cabrera down the third baseman, and that will be out at first. One away. Amaya now, who's 0 for 1. It's a 1-2 pitch. Amaya gets it up the middle, and that will be a one-out single for the first baseman. All right. Green to the plate. He is 0 for 1 today. A full count. Green. Oh, that could be a double play. No, it's just one. But the man is out at second. So it's Garcia now who is 0 for 1. An 0-2 pitch. Garcia uh, down the first baseline. He can't beat it out. And that will end the fourth. And it, it's looking as though a game where we're really having quick innings with the bat. And the Grom is, is struggling on the mound, isn't he? He's going to face McKinstry who is 0 for 1 today. It's a 2-2 pitch. And there's a strikeout. Number 2. Of the game for DeGrom. Margot now who is. Uh, he's Did he walk last time up I think? 0 for 0. A first pitch swing. Down towards a mayor at first. That is two away. And it brings Castro uh, Castillo up. Sorry who is 0 for 1. Can we have a 3 up 3 down inning? It's a first pitch swing. And that is a ground ball to Castro at third. And a good arm to. Oh no it's uh, Garcia at third sorry. And that ends the fourth. We go to the fifth. Ahmed will lead us off. 0 for 1 he is today. It's a first pitch swing. Come on, Nicky boy. Hits it well. It drops in front of the right fielder. And that is a leadoff single for Nick Ahmed. All right. What can Badu do? An 0, 1, 0 for 1 today. Sorry. A 2 2 pitch. And he swings and strikes out. Trevino now, who's 0 for 1. One out runner at first. A 1 2 pitch. And Trevino strikes out as well. It is Tommy Edmond, one for two, with a runner at first. Two away, an 0-2 pitch, and it ends in a strikeout as well. Thus ends at the top of the fifth. The Grom comes back out to face Grossman again, who's two for two. You've had your hits, mate. Go and be polite and sit down. Thank you. Strikeout number three for De Grom. Patterson comes in, 0-for-1. He is today. It's a 0-2 pitch. That is uh, popped up into right field. Green is there. Green makes the catch. That is, uh, should Green be there? No, Cabrera, they should be switched, shouldn't they? Witt Jr. comes in with uh, two out, no one on. It's a 2-2 pitch. It's into shallow center field. Back goes Edmund, makes the catch. And that'll do it for the fifth, still tied at one. Harold Castro will lead us off. He is 0 for 1 today. It's a first pitch swing. Harold gets it up the middle, does he? Yes, it sneaks past the second baseman into center field. And it is a leadoff single for Castro. What can Cabrera do now? He's one for two today. It's an 0-2 pitch. Cabrera! It's going to get caught, isn't it? Castro goes back to first. That's where he'll stay. One away for Amaya now, who's one for two. First pitch swing again. Amaya whips it down into right field, into the corner. Now, is that enough to score Harold Castro from first? He's turning. He's going. He's going to get there, is he? Yes, and Harold Castro restores the lead. Amaya with an RBI double. We go 2-1 up in the top of the six. One out runner at second for Green now, who's 0 for 2. Riley Green takes a 2-1 pitch straight to the first baseman. It does get a Mayer over to third. And Garcia now with a chance to extend that lead. He's 0 for 2. 
First pitch swing. Garcia, can he get it through? He can! And Louis Garcia with an RBI double. It's 3-1 now in the top of the sixth. Runner at first with two away for Nick Ahmed, who's one for two. A 2-2 two -two pitch, and Nick Ahmed pops it up. That should be caught out there. Center fielder makes the catch. It ends the top of the sixth, but we've scored two. We are now 3-1 up, and as things stand, going to the postseason. Prato comes in. He is 0-1 to face DeGrom. It's a 1-1 pitch. It's a ground ball. It gets past the mayor into right field, and it will be a double, will it? Yes. So a leadoff double for the Royals. It's Salvio Perez. No, Salvador Perez. He is one for one today. It's a full count. It's a pop-up. Green should have that comfortably. Runner will go for third, and we know that Green's arm isn't the strongest, and he'll get there. So, runner at third with one away. Pass Quentino to the plate. He is 0 for 2. It's a 1-2 pitch. Oh, that's going to pull one back. Into right center field. Now, is it a double? Is it a triple? It's just a double. But the tying run now stands at second. And if we just give up a lead as soon as we get it again, I am going to be annoyed, DeGrom. McKinstry comes in. He's 0 for 2. First pitch. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Not only have we given up a lead, we have fallen behind. 406 feet. How's Cleveland doing against Chicago? It is 4-3. The Grom will face Margot now, who is 0-for-1. One. one out, no one on. It's again deep into right field, but Green is there. That'll be two away. And Castillo comes up, 0-for-2. It's a 3-0 count. And he's grounded it to Nick Ahmed. That is usually an out. There it is. So we go to the seventh. But we've fallen behind. A do, a do, a kill, but do even will lead us off. He's 0 for 2. It's a 2 1 pitch. Come on, a kill. Oh, he's got it up the middle. Has he? Oh, what a catch. So unlucky for Badu. One away. Trevino, who is 0 for 2 today. It's another 2 1 pitch. Trevino. Gets it through the left side of the infield for a one-out single. All right. Tying run aboard. New pitcher, Zach Hake, comes in. ERA for him this season of, when we're looking at, just under four. He's going to face Tommy Edmond, who is one for three. It's a first pitch swing from Tommy Edmond. We're not going to steal the catcher, are we? No, it's a double play. And it is time to stretch. It is time to vote for your MVP as well. All right, time to vote for the MVP. Now, thank you, everybody, who nominated. Uh, we had two players with multiple nominations, so those are the two that will pit themselves against each other to see who is Detroit Tigers' MVP this season. Uh, now, in alphabetical order, the first man is DeGrom. Now, he's not having a great day today, but he is an 18-7 record this season, an ERA of 2.78 before this game started, 263 strikeouts, and a war of 8.2, which is actually fourth all-time with the, for the Tigers in a single season. So... That is uh, relatively impressive. The second man is, of course, the other side of the, of the coin. It is Austin Meadows. He is a batting average this season of 274, 41 home runs, 115 RBIs, and a war of 3.3. So those are your two options. Uh, there's a link at the top of the description down below. Make sure you go click on that. Vote for who you think has been our MVP this season, and we'll announce the, the uh, winner at the end of season awards. Hopefully not next episode, though the way this is going. Unless Cleveland does us a favor, it may well be next episode. All right, DeGrom, let's do this. It's Grossman again. It seems like he's batting every inning. He's two for three today. It's a first pitch swing. It's popped up, and it should be caught relatively comfortably in center field by Badu. So one away here in the bottom of the seventh. It is Pedersen coming in now. He is 0 for 2 today. It's a full count. Oh, it's a walk. DeGrom has issued another walk. Five. You don't think he's issued five walks all season. Witt Jr. comes up now. He is 0 for 3. A 3-1. Three, it's a double play ball. 1, 2, out of the 7th. Excellent. All right. Let's do this in the 8th. It is Harold Castro to lead us off. He's 1 for 2 today. He's going to fa face Hake. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's a well-hit ball. It gets through the left side. And for the second time, Harold Castro has himself a leadoff single. Cabrera now, who is 1 for 3. A 3-1. Three, oh, come on, Denny. He walks. Actually looked a decent pitch, that one, didn't it? Anyway, he walks. So two on, no one out for a mayor. He is two for three. 
First pitch. Oh, gets away from the catcher, but we don't... We don't advance. All right. It's a 1-2 pitch now on Amaya. Amaya has sent it deep. Is it deep enough to get the man over to third? No, and it's one away. And it's Riley Green now, who is 0 for 3. A 1-2 pitch. Come on, Riley. He strikes out. That's two away, and we're not making the most of base runners. It's Garcia, who's 1 for 3. He drove in at the run last time. It's an 0-2 pitch this time, and Garcia strikes out. And we're going to have to do it in the ninth. Jacob Barnes comes in to replace DeGrom. Barnes this season, ERA of 374. He's going to face Prato, who was one for two. It's a one-two pitch. So with DeGrom out of the game, that means he does not advance up the uh, strikeout list for, the, for a single season. He will stay in sixth, which is not bad, really, in the history of the Tigers to be sixth all time. But you know what I mean. It would have been nice. There's the ground ball. That should be out at first. It is. Barnes doing a decent job so far. Pasquantino comes in. He is one for three with an RBI. It's a first pitch swing with two out and no one on. And he has grounded that to a mayor at first base. And it goes to the ninth. There is a massive temptation to see how the Cleveland-Chicago game is going. But we'll, uh, we'll leave that as temptation for now. Ahmed will face Doolittle who's coming on for them. He is an ERA of 339. Ahmed is one for three. It's a 1-0 pitch. And I'll just remind you, Kansas City, you don't need to win this. Ahmed, is it going to get through? Is he going to get there? No. We have two outs left, and one of them is Badu, who is 0-3 in a slump, and probably playing his last game for the Tigers. A first pitch swing, Badu grounds at the second. Cleveland, I'm a big fan. I've always been a big fan. Trevino comes in now. He is 1-3. It's a first pitch swing. Trevino up the middle. Trevino keeps us alive. All right, we have a runner. We have Edmund at the plate. He is one for four today. He is our final out. It's a first pitch swing. Edmund, no, it's not deep enough. And please, please, Cleveland, please tell me you've won. In the top of the ninth, the Cleveland Guardians have scored a run. They have beaten the White Sox. And that means the Tigers are going to the postseason. We will be in the wild card. We have, uh, well, a decent record, 7-3 and three in the last 10 coming into this, uh, including, of course, six games against the Royals. So we have, we've earned it. Uh, we ended up splitting that series against Kansas City. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, let's uh, just click ahead here and see who we're going to be playing. We get to set the postseason roster. Uh, we capture the wild card. Uh, DeGrom has won. What's he done? Uh, so he's held a triple crown winner. So he's got, what's that, best record strikeouts in ERA. So he's essentially a certainty for the Cy Young. He has been absolutely brilliant. And if we go and have a look at... The wild card games. I'm not. It's all changed, hasn't it? I'm not really sure how how this works now. Playoff tree. So is it a best of three series? It must be against Houston. So against the bin lids, and the winner of that series will then be going to face uh, Kansas City. So there's no difference between being winning your division, sort of being the worst division winner, and except you play the worst wild card team. But you're still going to go into the wild card game. So it does that. It gets more teams in the playoffs. I'm not sure I exactly like that system. But anyway, no one cares what I think. So we've got at, also we're all at Houston. Okay, so that makes it a lot more difficult. So we've got three games on the road. Uh DeGrom will possibly be available for a potential game three if we get there. Um, but there's a lot of work to do. Hopefully, Torkelson's going to come back. Uh, we don't know when that's going to happen. Austin Meadows, we know, is out for the season. But the important thing is that we're in the postseason, and that didn't look likely when we sacked Hinch, did it? So really, really happy to be there. If you have enjoyed that, guys, make sure you hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Let me know in the comments who you think we should be putting in the playoff roster. Uh, we have 27 players. So the obvious ones that drop out, I think, are uh, the two pitchers that I wanted to get rid of anyway. So I think Ferguson, even though he's a left arm up, He's in a slump. I think he goes and Turnbull goes. Uh, and then I'll have to bring somebody in. Who's dropped out there? Ma Marinacchio will probably come back in and somebody else who I can't think of just now. Or do we leave Ferguson in there as a left arm? If we look at Ferguson, uh, we're at a time frame in September. 
He had an ERA of three from six innings pitched. Whip of 133. He did have a negative war. The FIP wasn't great. His ERA plus was decent, though. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Maybe we do leave him in there as a left arm. We take out Turnbull, who has just completely lost all form, and bring Marinaccio back in for him. Now, uh, we won't need a five-man starting rotation either, will we? So the starting rotation, I think, the Grom, Rodriguez, Alcantara, and then probably Laura. Although we could put Laura in the bullpen, but I think Manning only tends to go sort of four or five innings as a starter anyway. So maybe if uh, we put him in the in the bullpen as well. But anyway, uh, let me know what you what your your opinions are, and then the, the the hitting lineup picks itself really, doesn't it? We probably ditch uh, Krindler here and just pray that's that uh, the other two guys come well, with meadows is not coming back i need to get that through my head don't i anyway that's it for today i will see you next time for game one of the series against houston it's a bit of a tricky one this one usually what i do is i'd come back when there's a chance for someone to progress but i always think game one is a good yeah, you want to do game one and then when there's so much chance to someone to progress which will be game two so i guess ultimately we're, we're doing the, the wild card series and then if we get through that we'll, we'll we'll continue game one and then when there's a chance for someone to progress so i'll see you for uh game one against houston it's going to be tough hopefully we can get past them take care